Hey, what's up? It's Bobby, aka Paginator. It's later in the evening. I have had a very full day, but I'm excited to share the fun new bookish things that I have with you all. So I'm going to be doing a book haul from a basket. Kinda. I bought this new basket at uh, the Michaels Craft Store because they had baskets 50% off and mine looks like a box, but if they want to give me 50% off, I will call it a noodle if that's what they want me to call it. Anyway, I've got this basket slash box slash noodle full of stuff that I got when I went on an adventure today. So if you've watched my channel before, you might know that I live in Wyoming and we have no bookstores here. And I decided I'm going to just go on a book book expedition today. And I went to Salt Lake City. And uh, the, my first bookish stop on my little tour was the Salt Lake City Library. Now, you might be thinking, isn't the library where you check out books, not where you buy things? Well, you would be right about that. But the Salt Lake City Library has a library store within it, and you can purchase things, and you can get used books as well as new items, and all the proceeds go to benefit the Salt Lake City Library. So I'd like to support them whenever possible. And so I picked up a couple of fun things there. The first thing I got was a Mad Libs book that was Penguin Classics Mad Libs. And so I've already gone through and done the entire book. And they're all based on a different piece from classic literature. And so maybe I'll just flip open to one and just see what I did. Okay, so this one is based on... Pride and Prejudice, and it is um, when Darcy is uh, proposing to Elizabeth for the first time. In vain I have danced, it will not do. My candies will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how excitedly I admire and wave to you. If you were less of a necktie, I would thank you. As it is, I'm sorry for causing your nose to love me even though your chin doesn't wish to. Cut it out! No beating around the bubblegum with you. Might I ask why you so easily toss me away like yesterday's glass? I would never smirk a man who is responsible for ruining the fur coat of a most beloved sister. My suits are heavy indeed. You could never have asked for my mustache in marriage in any possible way that would have tempted me to accept. You are the last belle in London whom I could ever be prevailed, prevailed upon to marry. <laughs> So other than my slaughter of the word prevailed, prepailed, what's that? Um, it's kind of a fun little Mad Lib. My students love doing Mad Libs and I decided I'm not going to let them do these. So I went and sat down and enjoyed them all by myself. Another thing that I found at the library store is this cute little comic notebook. And this is just a place for you to take notes, but they're all in frames like a comic book. So you could do this for um, words or illustrations or whatever it is that you would like to take notes on in your own style. And I thought that's just kind of fun. And then I also got a game slash writing helper called Paint Chip Poetry. A game of color and wordplay. And so what you do is they have all of these uh, paint chips here. And you can't see the colors, but this whole line here is paint chips. And then there's a stack of prompt cards. And so you draw out a prompt. Let's see. This one says, there's no place like home. And you have 12 paint chips in your hand, and, you sh and they have words on them. And you try to place... Um, some or all of them into a poetic phrase or create a little story that has something to do with no place like home or whatever the case may be according to your prompt. And it has instructions that tell you you can play it in a, a variety of different ways. You can do it by yourself or in a group. You can keep track of winners or not. Just enjoy it for the, the, for the sake of playing with words. So kind of a fun thing. Um, just thought I'd give it a try. All right. Um, while I was there... I was able to check out some other things that were going on at the Salt Lake City Library, and one of them was a little kickoff kick off event for the Great American Read. And if you haven't heard of this, this is something that PBS is doing, and they have surveyed Americans, and I don't know which Americans or how many they surveyed, but they came up with 100 of America's favorite books. Now, I will argue with some of the books on this list. For example, Fifty Shades of Grey is on here. Are you freaking kidding me, people? What the H are you thinking? 
<sighs> anyway, I went through this list and I have read 39 of these. And I cannot say that I have read Fifty Shades of Grey because I will never read them. And if I decide to work my way through these, there might be some that I don't read like that one. Um, I don't know if I will ever read Game of Thrones. I know, how dare I, right? But I just... It's not something that I'm interested in. I don't watch the show. I don't know that I really want to read the books. But they do have these and the PBS is going to be letting people vote for their favorites. And I think they're going to like narrow it down if I, my understanding is correct. But anyway, um, I got this handy dandy little list. And then they had a few booksellers there, and one of them was The King's English, which is my favorite bookstore, and you may have heard me talking about it before. It is a Salt Lake City independent bookstore, and it happens to be totally wonderful because not only are they this cutie little bookstore, an independent one that you can support, but they have a great rewards program. And so I actually had some rewards cash. I had over $10 in rewards cash to spend, and I didn't spend it at the library at their booth, but I went to the store later and spent my rewards cash. But while I was at the library, I was chatting with the girl at King's English Table, and I was glancing at Sing Unburied Sing, which just won the National Book Award, and I kind of picked it up to look at it, and she goes, oh, you have to read this book. She goes, there is, this will divide your life. It's one of those books where you remember your life before you read it, and you remember your life after you read it. And I thought, okay, if she feels that strongly about this, I definitely want to give it a try. And um, this is a book about a Mississippi family's journey to, um, let's see, they're making the trip from their Gulf Coast town to the Mississippi State Penitentiary. Um, I, I'm assuming to visit a family member there, etc. And... National Book Award winner, that's a ringing endorsement in itself, so there we go. Sing on Buried Sing. All right. Now, I did go up to the King's English because they had an author there who was signing books. Um, Lee Statham was there, and I'm trying to reach into my bag for things and talk at the same time. And I had pre-ordered a copy of her book and was going to get it signed by her while I was there at the store. Well, I don't know if I like miscommunicated when I pre-ordered my book online, but the people at the store had her sign it when she came in, I'm assuming the day before or earlier today, to do some pre-signed copies. And so when I took my book up to the table and handed it to her, she goes, oh, she opened it up and she had already signed the title page. But... She was nice enough to personalize it for me. So I'll show you the book. This is Daughter 4254. And this is a young adult science fiction book. And she, um, ooh, what, where did that page go? So she did personalize the book for me and she said, make this world beautiful. And she also had a few of these bracelets. And since I was the first one in the signing line, I was lucky enough to get one. And I'm assuming it has something to do with the book. It seems to be a feather. And it's just a gold bracelet, but it's expandable. So if you have bigger wrists or smaller wrists, you can adjust as need be. And there you go. Um, this is about our girl named Daughter 40, uh, 4254. And I'm going to kind of summarize and skim the back of the book to give you an idea of what it's about. She used to think that life in a community where art, music, and names are outlawed would suffocate her creative spirit. Unless she is left to rot in prison, realizes there is far worse. So that's a direct quote right from the back of the book. Um, she also ends up meeting Thomas, who is also an inmate. And um, he tell, starts telling her stories of these mythical places where people have names. And there's art and creativity. And there's more than what she thinks is really in the world. Um, and so... Daughter 4254 and Thomas plot to escape together. Will it work? Will it not work? Are these mythical places really real? We shall find out as we read. So thank you, Lee Statham, for kindly personalizing my book, even though the good-hearted people at the store had already had you sign it. You know, sometimes miscommunications happen and you just roll with it. Okay. And so I mentioned that I had some bonus cash from the uh, 
King's English and so I decided to get two books there and so this is the one that I spent my bonus cash on I got a paperback copy of Heartless by Marissa Meyer I already have a personalized signed hardback copy of Heartless because I was able to attend a signing event when the book first came out and I loved it I've also listened to an audio and it's fantastic but my my students at school have been really wanting to read it and I didn't want to bring my personalized copy for them to borrow so I got a paperback version is that bad that I don't let them borrow my own personalized copy I don't think so I think it's good sense and the other book that I got is a middle grade novel called Nevermore the Trials of Morgan and Crow by Jessica Townsend. And I've heard a couple of different booktubers talking about this and how even if they don't really read a whole lot of middle grade, they're very into this. And since I do teach middle grade students, when I hear of a very good middle grade book, I'd like to snap it up. Um, my students much prefer to read about kids older than themselves, as all kids tend to do. So I do have a lot of young adult, but I have middle grade as well because my students are in middle school and their reading levels are all over the place. So I've got everything from Die of a Wimpy Kid and, uh, you know, el more elementary-ish kind of stuff all the way up to Throne of Glass and all kinds of young adult fiction. Kids needs vary from child to child and I am sorry that the camera just bumped. I set something down and it knocked into it. I'm clumsy. I am a very clumsy person. All right, maybe if I put some more stuff back into my basket box, then I won't knock things over again. Oh, come on, little book. There you go. That's better. All right, so then I had to go to uh, Barnes & Noble while I was in the big city. Um, I had some cash saved up, um, expressly for this trip and this was um, this whole day was really a present to myself in honor of Mother's Day I am NOT a mother um, I actually don't really like Mother's Day I have a hard time emotionally with Mother's Day because I've always wanted to be a mother but I haven't been lucky enough to experience that in my life I have three wonderful nieces and three wonderful nephews and a whole lot of wonderful students so I have plenty of children in my life I just don't have any that are biologically or adoptively my own and so I tend to try to escape town a least part of Mother's Day weekend and so tomorrow when it's officially Mother's Day I'm going to be probably laying in bed, reading a book, and watching reruns of The Big Bang Theory or something. Who knows? Anyway, so again, I've been saving this money up as this treat to myself to just stockpile and haul some books. And so at Barnes & Noble, I was able to pick up a few things that I had been looking for. And the first one is Ignite Me. I'm just missing this one as part of the Shatter Me series, so I needed to pick up a copy of that. And then this one I have been very excited about since I saw it on, um, crap, I can't remember if it was on the Barnes & Noble website or on something like Epic Reads or Riveted, Lit, um, anyway, I saw it somewhere and thought it looked really fun. It is called Bookish Boyfriends, A Date with Darcy. And this is about a girl who gets to be wooed by her bookish boyfriends. I can't imagine anything more fun. And it, it's Mr. Darcy. Now, Mr. Darcy is not my favorite Austin man, but he is certainly the most popular. So if they're going to choose a Jane Austen guy to be a bookish boyfriend, of course they're going to choose Mr. Darcy. My personal favorite is Captain Frederick Wentworth. And I also really love the Colonel, um, Colonel Brandon in Sense and Sensibility. I'm going to go see a Sense and Sensibility play in a couple of weeks, and I'm very excited about that. So anyway, sidetrack. All right, the next book that I got was Suitors and Sabotage by Cindy Anst Anstley, Anstey, and something, anyway. Look at this cover. Look at how fun this is. She has some other books called Love, Lies, and Spies, as well as Duels and Deception. And this one is 
I'm just going to read a little bit of the synopsis. It says, Shy aspiring artist Imogen Chively has just had a successful season in London, complete with a suitor of her father's approval. Imogen is ambivalent about the young gentleman until he comes to visit her at the Chively estate with his younger brother in tow. When her interest is piqued, however, it is for the wrong brother. Uh-oh. What will happen? Hmm. So we have two brothers, one girl, much like in the Vampire Diaries. Can you see my Mystic Falls hoodie? I'm totally just chillaxing in my Vampire Diaries hoodie. And it has a plot connection with this book. I know, it's late. I'm tired. I'm thinking of weird stuff. Okay. The next book that I got is Shadow Song, which is the sequel to Winter Song by S.J. Jones, which is a labyrinth retelling. And I read the first one thinking, I'll give it a shot, and if it's any good, I'll get the sequel. Well, holy cow, did I love it. And I even, as I was finishing up the book, I had about 100 pages or so, I turned on the movie Labyrinth and watched the scene where um, Sarah is in the ball with all the goblins and she's looking for Jareth and he's everywhere, but she can't see him as I was finishing up this book and it was just cool. It isn't an outright retelling of Labyrinth in that the characters are not named Jareth and Sarah, but it is a retelling of Labyrinth as well as the magic flute and there's just lots of fun magical elements. We're in the underground with the Goblin King who has light colored feathery hair and mismatched eyes, very David Bowish. So I'm very excited to read the second one which is Shadow Song. Two more books I picked up at Barnes and Noble. I know I have a problem. Books are falling everywhere. All right. Now this is one of those where I saw this book in my school library and it was so pretty that I just wanted one for myself. Plus, this book, The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw, has very strong ties, for me anyway, in my mind, with the movie Hocus Pocus. So I'll explain a little bit to you about the book and then maybe you can see if I'm crazy or not. So there's this cursed town called Sparrow, okay? I know Hocus Pocus is set in Salem, but anyway. 200 years ago in Sparrow, three sisters were sentenced to death for witchery. Stones were tied to their ankles and they were drowned in the deep water surrounding the town. For a brief time each summer, now the sisters return, stealing the bodies of three troubled girls so they may seek their revenge, luring boys into Sparrow's harbor and pulling them under. So again, not exactly like Hocus Pocus, but we have the three sisters hundreds of years ago convicted for witchery and now they come back to inflict havoc on a current times town. And so there's a little bit of siren in there because they're pulling these boys into the water. And there's, uh, you know, there's gonna be some teens that fight back as usually happens in young adult. I think the main character's name is Penny. Let me just double check here. Yeah, Penny Talbot. And she knows that she's gonna be one of the girls that are um, possessed for lack of a better word by these witches. And, uh, there's a boy in here named Bo. Now, I was hesitant on that because one of my former students is named Bo, and I have mixed feelings about how I feel about his name being in a book. But, you know, being a teacher, you run into kids with lots of different names, and you're just bound to run into their names in different books as you go. You just have to roll with it and try to keep the fictional character separate from the child in your head. My last stop on this wonderful shopping trip day was to Michael's, where I bought the box slash basket and I bought two more Mad Lib books because we're out of Mad Libs in my classroom. So for my students, I got Disney and Unicorns and Mermaids Mad Libs. So we have enough Mad Libs to hold us through the rest of the school year. And I guess I should hold up this box basket thing that I keep talking about. Keep in mind, I got this for 50% off. And it's a lovely large box slash basket with a chalkboard on the end so you could write fun things on it. So that was just a really fun day and very good for me mental health wise to just have a day to go and be in bookish places. Yeah. 
If you have any ideas on which of these books I should read first, please let me know in the comments below or if you've read any of them, please give me a non-spoilery bit of feedback on them and give me maybe a thumbs up, thumbs down on a certain book title. Um, yeah, so there we go. I hope you have a wonderful and bookish day. Happy reading. Adios.